lessons in 10 minutes or less. I'm Jacob, and this video's topic covers the different methods we have for measuring how fast an aircraft travels through the air. Now, the most common terms that pilots use today are indicated, calibrated, and true airspeed. In this video, I'll break down each one and hopefully help alleviate any kind of confusion between them uh, and help to uh, set a basis for where they come from. So let's get started. Now, the most basic way to measure airspeed is going to be the difference in pressure between a pitot tube and a static port. This is going to give us an indicated airspeed. And by indicated airspeed, uh, you'll usually see that abbreviated as IAS. Uh, this, like I said, is a difference in pressure. So it works by comparing a ram air pressure entering a pitot tube and comparing it to a the static pressure measured by a static port. So as you've looked at uh, helicopters before, uh, usually towards the nose of a helicopter, you're going to have a tube. Uh, either maybe hanging below a weapon or below a, uh, a wing or um, on a wing, on a nose, something like that. You're going to have a, a tube that measures the ram air. It's oriented towards the nose of the helicopter. Also, at another point in the helicopter, uh, you're going to have, or airplane that is, uh, you're going to have static ports. And these are just going to be little spots that have usually a ring with some dots in it that are uh, helping, uh, or these, these, set kind of a baseline that they set the they measure the static pressure of the ambient air around so what happens for indicated airspeed is it's seeing the difference in between these two so what happens is in between uh, both of these two you're going to have a gauge which is going to be a an airspeed indicator and the airspeed indicator is saying uh, okay we have this much difference in between the static pressure and this ram air pressure it moves a needle a certain bit and this is giving you a reading for an indicated airspeed um, now this is a mechanical instrument that registers the difference on the face of this uh, this gauge here but because it's purely mechanical uh, based on pressure it's subject to air and therefore indicated airspeed is going to be regarded as uh, kind of the least accurate of the ones that we have of uh, the ones here for measuring airspeed and because of the errors measuring these, uh, measuring airspeed, it can cause quite a, uh, a drastic difference in your navigation if you're doing potentially long distance flights using dead reckoning. So what happens is many manufacturers will provide corrective, corrective charts to, uh, to help get this, this airspeed a little bit more accurate for the pilot. So the charts account for errors and convert an indicated airspeed into a new, more accurate form of, of airspeed called calibrated airspeed. Calibrated, usually abbreviated CAS, calibrated airspeed. Uh, these charts are just based off of flight testing and corrections for the known uh, errors that are in the instruments. Uh, the charts are empirical and just as simple as identifying uh, where your indicated airspeed is and converting it to uh, calibrated airspeed. So you'll usually see charts like this with calibrated airspeed on one side, indicated airspeed on another side with a line going through it. And you just find whatever speed indicated, intersect the line and come over and that's gonna give your calibrated airspeed. Now at speeds that helicopters fly, this difference may only be just a few knots, uh, but for faster aircraft, or if you're covering long distances on an old fashioned cross country VFR flight, these subtle differences in airspeed can make a, uh, a significant difference for you. Um, so what happens now is um, with your calibrated airspeed, your airspeed can still be uh, kind of fine tuned even more accurately um, and it can potentially be horrendously off depending on what kind of environment you're flying in. Uh, and that's because unfortunately air doesn't have the same density and temperature everywhere you go. So to take this, uh, this, these types of airspeeds to the next level, uh, we'll take it to uh, our third type, which is going to be true airspeed, abbreviated as TAS. So, um, which, what it's doing here is it's taking your calibrated airspeed and you're going to adjust this for temperature and pressure. So true airspeed is the true velocity of the aircraft relative to the atmosphere around it. And keep in mind that at a standard sea level condition, our calibrated airspeed is going to equal true airspeed. But if you're looking at extremes, such as operating in the mountains or high altitudes, stuff like that, um, you're going to have some deviations. So let's take a look at a, uh, just an example just to, to outline that. Let's imagine you're flying at, say, 10,000 feet. Uh, the temperature up there is zero degrees Celsius. And let's just say you're flying along at a nice, comfortable uh, 75 knots um, indicated airspeed. All right, so 
uh, you do your calibrated airspeed conversion based on your manufacturer's charts, and it turns out that 75 knots indicated airspeed is actually about 80 knots calibrated airspeed. All right, so, you know, you get a little bit of an extra few knots there, but uh, you're actually traveling a little bit faster than you uh, than your instruments are telling you here. And that's because of the, the air density being uh, so much less the higher altitude you are. So you can calculate this usually with uh, um, an E6B or sometimes your helicopter will do it for you. But what I'm looking at is I enter the temperature and the altitude. So zero, I wanna put that on the 10 for 10,000 feet. And then I'm reading the inner loop for a calibrated airspeed of 80. That gives us a true airspeed of 94 here on the outside ring. So I did zero, de zero degrees, 10,000 feet, 80 knots from my calibrated to the outside ring gives me my true of 94 knots. So despite my gauge telling me I'm going 75 knots, I'm in all actuality going 94 knots. This is a 19 point difference from your indicated airspeed, a pretty significant difference, especially if you're trying to navigate based on time, distance, heading. Now the reason for this, uh, this drastic difference is because the air is thinner and the dynamic pressure is less for the same speed when you get into these higher altitudes. So this means that uh, if you maintain the same true airspeed and climb and altitude, that indicated airspeed is gonna tick down less and less and less and less because there's just less air molecules in the air, but you are in, in fact traveling 94 knots, uh, true airspeed at 10,000 feet, not your 75 knots that you're getting as an indication in the cockpit. So it's kind of um, important to know because you're gonna have subtle differences in uh, your navigation and whatnot. But simply put, your true airspeed is gonna be your real airspeed and may not be what's shown on your airspeed indicator. Now, some of the, uh, the newer helicopters, like I was saying before, they can calculate it for you based on their uh, instrument packages. Some people have add-ons to their older cockpits that can modify their calibrated to a true by putting in uh, the pressure and temperature. Uh, and still some people um, fly helicopters that don't have any of this and they just have to rely on a nice old E6B or some planning on the ground before you, can, you even go and fly. Uh, whichever method you use is fine as long as it's accurate, uh, but I do believe it's important to understand why there is a difference in between these airspeeds and what causes that so you can know whether or not you should maybe recalculate or readdress your plans. Um, so if you're new to uh, the helicopter community and you still don't have an E6B, I'd highly recommend getting one. Uh, it does a lot of stuff, not just uh, calculation for true airspeed, but also fuel computations and whatnot. It doesn't require batteries. It fits easily in a flight bag and can really help you out in a pinch if you got to do some, uh, some quick math. But that wraps up this video. Uh, we talked about the indicated airspeed, calibrated airspeed, and true airspeed and how their accuracies can differ uh, and generally how they build upon each other. You, need, uh, you get your calibrated airspeed uh, based on the charts from your manufacturer and comparing that to your indicated airspeed, and you modify your calibrated airspeed with the pressure and temperature to get your true airspeed. Um, but if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit like and subscribe and below. Also, be sure to leave any feedback you have in the comments section below. But ultimately, thanks for watching. I'm Jacob, and this has been Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. As always, stay flying.